Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Warcraft Happy Fun Time. I had way too much fun making the first episode, and uh, in the spirit of doing something different, I decided that I would film at least the starting part of one of my favorite zones, which is Hillsbroad Foothills. The redesign of Hillsbroad Foothills uh, has been covered a lot because of Cataclysm. It was completely redone and has probably one of the most, what do you call it, not telling, but one of the most um, iconic quests now in the game that a lot of people talk about. And this quest is called Welcome to the Machine. Um, this is going to be really old news for some people, but for people that haven't played WoW in a while, uh, <laughs> you might find this pretty funny. Anyway. You call, come up and talk to the first uh, person in the zone, and uh, this this lady's name is High Executor Darlifafafafa. I don't know how to pronounce her last name. And she's all like, come here, have a cigar. You're going to go far and fly high as a ranking officer of the Forsaken. Yes, you're going to experience the good life, and you're going to love it. And I want you to take these orders and dispense them to the lowest least scrubs that come along looking for work. And who you give what is holy at your discretion. So you accept this quest, and this quest is hand out three quests. So you hop on this little skeletal steed over here. You get an exclamation point above your head. And then all of this nonsense happens. Let's see if I can turn my volume up a bit. So our first victim is this guy called Dumbass. That's literally his name. D-U-M-A-S-S. -S. And Dumbass says, Hi, I'm new. Big white white creature made with wings made me alive. I serve the Banshee Queen. Yay. Help. Hi. Maybe you should go take a nap or something. I don't know if I have any work for you. Okay, thanks. I'll just wait here with you. Thanks. Okay. Wait a minute, uh, it looks like something just came up. Yes, right here on this uh, sheet of paper. You need to head southeast into the Azure Load Mine and report to Captain Keaton. Yeah, it's that way. I point that way. North, got it, thanks, bye, thanks. And so the first stereotype of the retarded noob player is established. We're gonna go through two more of these. Can you smell what the Loctar is cooking? I love this guy. <laughs> so, of course, next we have on our list of random people, the elitist asshole. <laughs> Looks like you're running out of idiots to put atop this horse. This is the puniest one yet. Sub, sub. I have seen the fall of the Lich King. Creations of the Titans have fallen before my mighty axe. When called upon, I alone spearheaded a victory for the Archon Crusade against the beasts of Northrend. Now I come for the ultimate challenge. What does Hillsbroad Foothills have to offer King Spl Slayer Orcus? Uh, so apparently there's some trouble in South Shore. Something about Worgen insurgents. Maybe you could help with them. Insurgents, you say? Is there any risk of death or dismemberment to me? Nope. Then Orcus will do it, yes! Right, thanks. Just go ahead and head southeast. Yep, more south than east. Probably off the coast. Go forth to victory. Yes, cowardly quest giver. Sit atop your pale horse while Orcus brings safety and glory to the horde. I return with a thousand skulls. And then there's Johnny Awesome. Johnny Awesome has arrived, Philistine. Present me with your menial tasks so I may compete, complete them with only mild enthusiasm, most likely a complete disregard for any directions that you provide that are more complicated than what my map is able to display. Um, I think Johnny Awesome is the personification of a forum troll. As we see, he's laid down in BOE, BOA gear, uh, head to toe, and he's riding the, uh, pets, the, uh, blizzard... Celestial Steed, which I think was the first cash shop item that was ever given out, and caused a lot of rage in its own right. Anaria, I, of course, have one because I love Crack Pony. Look at me, peasant. Heirlooms cover my body from head to toe, gifted to me by the greatest heroes Azeroth has ever known. Now look at yourself. Now look back at me. Yes, this horse is made of stars. What pointless series of tasks befitting a mentally 
proficient orc have you prepared for me? Well, we're having some problems at the sludge fields located northeast of here. Warden Stillwater could use your help. Fine, fine, what else? That's it. That's all? One quest? Surely you jest. Are there no bear asses to collect? Perhaps a rare flower that I could pick from which you will make some mildly hallucinogenic tonic, which you will then drink, resulting in visions of the great apocalypse? Perhaps the logical po- or bleh. Perhaps the local populace a mile annoying, ill-tempered gophers are jack acting up and need to be brought to justice? No, nothing. That's all, Johnny Awesome. Take it or leave it. Jorel Aran. I will do this one thing that you ask of me, Questgiver. Pray I find more menial tasks to accomplish, or you will be hearing from me again, and I assure you that my commentary on forums of public opinion will be most unkind. And Johnny Awesome gives me the finger, and proceeds to run away. That sets the stage for the entire zone. Speak quickly. How was it? Everything you dreamed it would be exciting? No, no, yes. I can see that you're a true hero and you need action. I guess a desk job isn't for you. No, it is not. So, that starts the hills, Brad. Foothills. The shield looked like ants for poopy shield. Anyway. I guess I'll do a few quests. Um, I guess it so happens near here is one of the most disgusting quests in the game. The first time I did it, I was like, un I, I just couldn't believe what I was doing. It was, it was really gross. So while we do the most disgusting thing ever, um, let's switch topics for a bit, shall we? <sighs> Die, bear! Here, let me actually fix my sound first. I just wanted to turn it up for that one part and get all the lock tars and all the stuff like that in there. But by the way, yes, we are currently picking bears for spider eggs. <laughs> it's so gross. Ew! And who makes the freaking little splatty noise every time you grab one? Oh my god. Sick. It's freaking sick. Disgusting. Anyway, okay. So, went out to get food earlier, and uh, on the way back, or actually on the way there, we ended up popping a tire. Um, my roommate's car got a very large piece of metal lodged in, like, the very back of it. And it led me to think how exactly massive pieces of metal are able to come random, randomly just be in the middle of the road... And are people really that inconsiderate that they just leave their trunk beds open and just let random shit fly around? And I got thinking about this. And then I sort of realized, you know, there's been a really huge turn. I'm not sure if you guys have noticed this or not. But recently, it just feels like there's so many more assholes recently in the world. Like, at some point, I, I was going to make a movie, or not a movie, I was going to make a video about proper movie etiquette because it really bothered me, or it really bothers me whenever I go to the movies with someone, be it one of my friends or, you know, close family, just, just anyone. It seems like more often than not recently, people will just randomly break into conversations in the middle of a movie if you're going to the theater, and that's got to be like one of my biggest pet peeves ever. Like, I get so pissed when I'm just sitting there. Like, we went to go see um, Pacific Rim. Me and Scott, like, a while, a few weeks back. And... No, it wasn't Pacific Rim. It was another movie. It was, um... The Lady in Black. I went to go see The Lady in Black with my roommate. And, first of all, I didn't know it was a horror film until I got there and started watching it. I thought it was just, like, a a thriller or something and I had to punch my roommate afterwards because I hate horror by the way like you're never going to catch me playing any more amnesia I only played that because I felt like I was forced to um, because it was so heavily requested but I'm going to stop doing things I don't want to do um, that I don't need to do because it's just shit like that keeps me up at night anyway this isn't this isn't a conversation about what I'm afraid of 
This is a conversation about this guy in the theater. Like, I think it was like halfway through the showing. Randomly picked up his phone and started talking on it. And like, I don't remember, I don't remember the details of the conversation, but he was, he was loud enough for the entire theater to hear him. And like... He was going on and going on and just talking and talking. And he was like, yeah, yeah, I'm in the middle of this movie. Yeah, it's really scary. Yeah, the kid who plays Harry Potter is really good. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a really good movie. I think you should probably see, like that sort of thing. He's talking to his, his either his doctor or his wife or something. I don't remember. But <laughs> thank God, I about stood up and said something. But there was a freaking... There was a guy on the front that basically st stood up, turned around back at this guy, and like yelled at the top of his lungs, "Shut the hell up! We're watching a movie!" Rah! And the guy like got off his phone. I think he actually was so startled that he left. But man, there's so many people just doing stupid shit like that. It's completely inconsiderate. Like, okay, people talking in the movies is just one example. Another thing is, like we're in we're in a we're living in a small apartment complex right now, and we share it with a handful of other people. Most of them are either retirees or just like old people. It's like it's not like a nursing home community, but there's a lot of old people here, and um, yeah. So we uh, we had a neighbor like a few months ago I think they moved they moved to another apartment like across the complex there was there was this neighbor who had this little pug and whenever they were in and they went to, they went to let the pug out to use the bathroom they wouldn't go far enough away from their apartment to where like it would be okay for the pug to just kind of take a break you know it's do do its normal business and have a nice poop like they would walk this pug immediately outside of their apartment along the pavement like the concrete whatever and oh god it would leave these little turds basically all across the um sidewalk Embrace the shadow. and <laughs> it was so disgusting like I got so tired of trying to dodge all this stuff, and eventually I think it got bad enough that a lot of the neighbors ended up complaining. And uh, there was this ordinance that was passed out where um, they, they said if, if, you, if you have a dog and you don't clean up after it, then you're actually endangering yourself for eviction. And after that, um, instead of like them stopping and actually walking their dog right what they ended up doing was they like completely moved they switched apartments and went all the way to um this place across the way i guess so they could walk their dog easier and it would be off the path or something and but i i don't know like i know this is an old couple and i guess maybe they do have trouble walking a little bit but they're, they're, they're the kind of things that, that the fact that you had to be told to do that and that you couldn't just you know realize that you'd probably get in trouble for letting your dog poop all over the sidewalks is that sort of thing just bothers me like even with the the dude wa uh, talking to people at the movies like it's not it's not even the new generation of people that um like teenagers and stuff that are causing all these problems it seems like it's more or less older people like the guy who was talking at the movie theater was someone in his oh i finally got thunderclap by the way he <laughs> it was like someone in his um 50s or something and it kind of bothered me i was like you're supposed to be sort of setting an example for people and you're not you're just kind of making an ass of yourself <sighs> so honestly it, it really isn't much of my business but it just made me really freaked out i was kind of kind of disturbed by that there was another thing that happened recently too oh um 
<laughs> we got this other. I might as well just turn this into a video about talking about my neighbors. We got this other guy, this other neighbor, who basically is kind of, you know, like I've got this one guy in my in my old cul-de-sac, who's basically the crazy sergeant, and like I grew up grew up with this guy up the street, and like the rumor around was like he he trapped and ate people's cats. I don't know how true that was. It probably wasn't, you know, he was probably actually a good guy, but like he'd always come down and yell at people when around the 4th of July when we started shooting off fireworks. He would always be like the first, he was like the, the massive party pooper, like the old guy in Dennis the Menace that Dennis constantly picked on, like that sort of thing. Um, but yeah like so he, we have a neighbor now that's kind of like that old guy and I got in trouble with him I, I was going out for a jog one morning and it was like maybe a month or two ago but this old guy was watching me and he just kind of gave me the weird stink eye as I was walking and I went out for this, for this run and when I came back I walked back up to my door and he like followed me to my door and started yelling at me and he was like don't you know that's wet pavement there blah 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 how dare you you're making this apartment a bad place and blah 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 and I was just like dude what and like I looked back and they had marked off this area of the concrete with one traffic cone and all, he had put a lawn chair beside it. And so I didn't think anything of it. I just was like, I just walked over it and didn't really put it together until he like yelled at me about it. And I was like, well, I just didn't notice. Sorry. Like I was expecting, like usually when, you know, when you put wet cement out or something, you have um, like caution tape or just like a rope around it or something. Like that's normal, right? But he acted like I freaking killed his cat. It just went off on me, and eventually I just ignored him and like went back inside. But and I didn't really think much of it. But um, oh dear, I'm gonna have trouble with this quest. I kill things too quickly. Um, let me just beat on these. Come on, come on, get weak, weakening you. Weakening you. There we go. Oh, that looks hilarious. <laughs> oh. My god. Uh, that reminds me of something else, but I'll I'll save it for for now. Anyway, um So that was the first episode of Trouble We Had with our neighbor. And then time went on a little bit more. And like he was kind of avoiding me for the longest because I don't know maybe he felt bad that he yelled at me or something but then like a week ago um, my roommate was out walking his dog we have a dog now by the way I might get you pictures um, my roommate was out walking his dog and like his dog randomly decided to pee like at the little corner part in front of uh, in front of his apartment and like we're in an apartment complex right there's no, like, we don't have individual lawns in this apartment complex. The uh, caretaking of all of the greenery is done by, you know, the gardener, staff, whatever. Well, um, do you think, dumbass? Thank you. Yeah, just keep beating on this bitch. Um, this guy saw just, um, this dog, like peeing on the bush in front of his apartment and flipped his crap and went out there and started going like no oh, you need to get your dog out of here this is my lawn it's my property blah, blah, blah. same guy same guy as the one that yelled at me about the concrete and followed me to the door uh, to the door of my apartment and my roommate's not as nice as i am and he freaking flipped out on him and so apparently like the old guy uh, 
eventually came to came to our front door and apologized to him. But he never came back and apologized to me. I guess he felt like I was an idiot and I was I was justifiable for for yelling at, but I didn't I didn't flip back out on him, so whatever. And it's not like the concrete like it was fairly obvious that the concrete was like brand new in that little place anyway. So it wasn't like I was messing with the feng shui of the uh the apartment. So I don't know. I don't know what to make of that. I think we're almost done with this little questing area here. There is a lot of freaking battle pets above where we are. But yeah, in Hillsbred, what you end up doing is you do three quests, and at the end of, or you you do that first intro quest, and then after that, um, I'm going to have enough experience to basically be done because of all the BOAs I have. But that's the only part of Hillsbred I really like doing anyway. So, what we're going to end up doing, and I might film all of this. It'd make a really, a really freaking long video. Um, but well, hey, we'll see how long I can talk. Damn it, I killed that fucker. Son of a bitch. Hey, hey, Miner. Hey, come here. Come here. That reminds me. Yeah, I was gonna say something about this. Um, there was this random level 10 hunter that dueled me on full BOAs earlier that I killed by just using my throwing weapon. It's funny. Eh, I guess it wasn't that funny. It was kind of pathetic, actually. Poor kid. Capture! There we go. And now that all of this is finished, who are we going to come across but Dumbass, who apparently found a lot of spiders. Hello, Dumbass. You can hear Dumbass speaking through the webbing. Hi, spiders everywhere. The captain sent me to save the world and capture humans. What is this place anyway? It's so hot, I... And then Dumbass goes on and on about his situation. Escort Dumbass to safety. Thanks, hi. Let's round up some humans for the captain. Um, I already got him. Keep dumbass away from webbed humans. Oh yeah, that's right. He does automatically just aggro into all of them. Come on. Come on. Come on, dumbass. It's okay. These humans look dangerous! Ah! Come with me. It will be fine. <sighs> Punk. Were you in Silver Pine when the Banshee Queen killed all the organ? No, actually we weren't. I think I actually skipped a lot of that zone. I did like the first intro part and that was it. The problem with leveling with a shit ton of BOAs is really you level freaking crazy fast. And you outlevel all of the zones, like, what's the level range of this zone? Yeah, Hell's Broad's 20 to 25. I am probably going to hit 25 before I'm even halfway done with this area. Because I have... Helm. Shoulders. Cloak. Chest. And pants. And the guild buff. So, yeah. Terran, mate! Mill, okay. Is that in the Barrens? I'm on my way, thanks. Well, yeah, that's great. I'm so happy to see that Rexar helped you out of the mine, postponing your tragic and inevitable death. Now, why don't you scurry along now? I hear Tor Tor bleh. Torin Mill. I don't know why I call it Torin Mill. Everyone calls it Torin Mill. I guess it's just convenient. Have you ever heard the saving survival of the fittest? What you're doing conflicts with natural law, buddy. That idiot should have died. You know whose fault it'll be, right? endangers other people I don't care secretly I hate all of the forsaken so it's not even a big deal <clears throat> actually let's not go to the sludge fields as it turns out um, I had an issue with Skype pop, pop up on me and uh, I didn't record the rest of this sort of quest series so let me encourage you if you have not played through the rest of hills broad foothills and seen the entirety of this quest line please do so it's extremely funny very entertaining um you get to see what happened to johnny awesome and kingslayer orcas as well as uh 
what I showed with uh, the fate of dumbass, who eventually turned out to be just fine, we think. But um, thank you all for watching and putting up with my Warcraft videos. Uh, I'm glad that some of you are actually enjoying them. It makes me feel pretty good. So with that, I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.